we think it's time to draw the line in the sand and tell Washington that uh, no longer are we going to accept their um, oppressive hand in the state of Texas. Some residents of the great state of Texas have had enough of the oppressive hand that feeds them. And over the weekend, they decided to bite it. It was nearly five months ago that Texas Governor Rick Perry came out publicly in support of a resolution affirming Texas sovereignty and thereby opening the door to the possibility of breaking apart the United States of America by having Texas secede from the Union. Well, now a group of secessionists calling themselves the Texas Nationalist Movement is demanding that Governor Rick Perry make good on his threats. The secessionists held a rally this weekend on the Capitol steps in Austin, lamenting that Governor Perry wasn't there to support them and calling for a special session of the Texas legislature to be called to debate whether or not Texas should leave the country. You know, many conservative politicians this summer have enjoyed trying to secure the support of the fringy McFringersons among us uh, by making some extreme statements, whether it's Senator Tom Coburn saying the U.S. deserves threats of assassination and other political violence right now, whether it's Congressman Phil Gingrey saying that people should bring guns to public meetings now, or whether it's Rick Perry saying that maybe Texas ought to secede. The problem is... This is what happens when a supposedly mainstream politician feeds the fringe. Watch this. I hate that flag up there. That flag that's above the Texas flag, that's the United States flag. I hate the United States government. The U.S. flag is coming down from over Texas. It will not be part of Texas anymore. We are aware that stepping off into secession may in fact be a bloody war. We are aware, we understand that the tree of freedom is occasionally watered with the blood of tyrants and patriots. Yeah. Health care for those who can't pay for it. Health care, you know, get a job. Just get a job. Get a job. Get a job. Get a job. We want freedom, total and complete freedom, secession. Secession is the answer. We hate the United States. Get out of our lives. Get off our backs. Move on. Governor Perry, I, and the rest of the people of Texas, if you abrogate this leadership, we will pick up this banner and we will march it forward. And when it comes to the time for the vote for secession, we will in one voice shout, yes, we can. Yes, we can. I do not think that means what you think it means. Want to know the single most amazing thing about that tape that we just saw? The I hate the flag, I hate the U.S. guy, I hate the United States of America, that guy is running for governor in Texas. The woman who said we're ready for a bloody war, also running for governor in Texas. Or I guess it's president. Would it be president of the nation of Texas? Joining us now is Dallas Morning News senior political reporter Wayne Slater. He's author of the book Bush's Brain, How Karl Rove Made George W. Bush Presidential. Wayne, thanks very much for coming back on the show. Good to see you. Hey, great to be with you, Rachel. So, no Rick Perry at the secession event. After his, his big splash at the tea parties this spring, why do you think he didn't show up? Yeah, well, I think this is an object lesson, and be careful what you ask for, because you may ask for secession, and then you end up with the lunatic fringe on the Capitol steps calling for you to do something about it. Uh, clearly, Rick Perry is trying to divide the field here. On the one hand, he wants to talk about secession and states' rights and the Tenth Amendment and state sovereignty to fan the flames of the, of the right wing of his party for re-election. On the other hand, he doesn't want to position himself so that many con just normal conservative Republicans think that he is too closely aligned with the kooks. Well, what, what are those political risks there in terms of seeming too politically aligned with the kooks. Is it possible to seem that way right now in Republican politics in Texas? Is it possible to seem too extreme and that be the reason that you lose a Republican primary? 
Well, it doesn't seem that way, does it? <laughs> um, That's why you, I'm you have, in fact, yeah, you have Kay Bailey Hutchison, the challenger of Rick Perry, saying that she thinks this secession talk is silly. She's calling for an enlightened Republicans, and I guess enlightened Republicans in Texas means those who uh, go to NASCAR but don't put the Confederate flag on their on their window of the car. Uh, this is really an appeal to a conservative constituency in the primary the Republican primary, that is very, very conservative. Now, on the one hand, you don't want to appeal to folks whose main sort of method of operating is to call for you to pick up your guns and go to the hills. On the other hand, talking about states' rights and state sovereignty and anti-Washington rhetoric really pays dividends here. Well, if Hutchison is going to run to Perry's left on the issue of sovereignty and state rights and the prospect of secession, i got to ask you, and you're an experienced guy in Texas politics, are there any real chances that as this bid for re-election ramps up for Perry, he would support there being a, a referendum on secession or there being some sort of formal debate of it in the legislature? Uh, well, th th this group, in fact, is asking uh, the governor to call a special session for uh, uh, to put a, uh, an issue on the ballot for Texas voters to vote to secede from the union, which would be, of course, illegal. Uh, it is unlikely. I talked to the governor's office this afternoon. It's unlikely the governor is going to do this. On the other hand, as I said, the governor would like to continue to fan the flames, the heat of those con those Republican cons uh, re conservative Republicans who like the idea of independence, who like the idea of state sovereignty, who don't don't like Barack Obama, who don't like the federal government, and rhetorically he's using something like a discussion of secession, though probably not really secession, to build his political profile. Wayne Slater, senior political reporter with the Dallas Morning News, author of the book Bush's Brain, how Carl Rove made George W. Bush presidential. Wayne, invaluable insight as always. Thanks for your time tonight. Great to be with you.